Hey, welcome back to Eye on Baltimore. I'm John Carrington and my special guest is Barbie M. Johnson and she is a writer and she's a local talent and she's written a book entitled Talk It Out. Talk It Out. You know, sometimes people think the best psychiatry is going to church. <laughs> you can work it out with your mind where every now and then somebody writes a book that kind of summarizes what you can get from a good session of talking with God. Barbara M. Johnson, how you doing? Welcome to Why I on Baltimore. I'm blessed, thank you, and um, hello to everyone. Okay, now your book, what inspired you to write Talk It Out? What inspired me to write Talk It Out was an actual situation that happened, John, um, and the children took it from the school into the streets, and we don't need that happening with our children. Are you, are you trying to say the children are bad? <laughs> children are children. They will do whatever it takes to, you know, try and out. help their friend so they think. Uh -huh. And then they could be messing up All because right. they don't know the whole story. They have the whole story. So you geared this towards children to help them to um, mediate conflict. Absolutely. And understand bullying. Mm -hmm. Well, could you read a selection from the book? I, I really appreciate uh, hearing a little bit of what you've written to help our young people, uh, instead of misbehaving, behave. Talk it out. And I want to read the portion where actually the, they take it to the streets. It says, Miss Sims maintained her composure and responded, he's doing his homework right now. And who are you? I am Alice. Chip hit my cousin, raising an eyebrow. Miss Sims looked sternly at the little girl and exclaimed, Alice, you and your friends need to go home. You don't even know what happened between those two, but you are over here at my door ringing my doorbell. Do you know you can get hurt doing, going to a person's house being simple? Stop thinking about what you are doing and your friends sitting over there getting you hurt. You have one side of the story, which is the secondhand information you got from a third party individual who wasn't there in the first place. Alice, you and your friends go home. Mm, mm, mm. That, that's what you call taking up for a friend and you don't even know all the circumstances, but you've got your mouth and your body in the way of the problem being solved, and you're now a part of the problem. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of violence occurs because people intervene in situations that they have, number one, no business being involved in, and number two, they didn't bring a solution, they brought more conflict. Um, that really happened? This is a true story, it really happened. That little girl knocked on your door? Yes, it was my door. Looking for your son to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All because they did not have the story of what happened, mm. even though she said it was her cousin, but 
Parents don't even know what their children are doing after school. So they need to be cognizant and even talk with their children about how was their day, what happened, how did they, their day go, and ask them about what did they do. Well, what reactions have you gotten uh, from the book? I know you've given it out to people, you've sold yes. it to people. What, what reactions have you, feedback have you gotten? I've received feedback that, hey, I see this happening at my house. I see this in my classroom. Teachers are seeing this. Parents are seeing this. Other people are seeing this happen, but they will not give a voice to it. We have to give a voice to it that this is hurting our children. Our children need to be taught to think for themselves, make right decisions and choices, not to go with the crowd and because you're moved by your emotions and now you're stirred up over a situation that you really don't have the right information about. All right, well, how can folks get a hold of Talk It Out? They can go on the website, um, thefaithwalk.yolasite.com, or they can contact me, 443-301-7928. Please repeat the number. The number again, 443-301-7928. The book is Talk It Out. Well, you know, this is very interesting. Um, let, me, let me read the first uh, page of the book. I'd li like to share that with our audience. Talk it out. Chip was excited when the coach chose him to be the quarterback for the football game they were about to play. Chip beamed with excitement as he takes the ball, preparing to throw it. Artie interrupts. I want to be the quarterback. No! Chip roars. I was chosen by the coach to be the quarterback for the game. Artie, talking with his teeth clenched, I'm going to get you later after school, Chip replies. Artie, I'm not afraid of you, and you are not going to do anything to me. All right, now let's stop there. Now comment and say, wow, that's what actually is like playing sports and talk about it being sports related, okay? And then you don't have to read any more, but now you can comment a little bit, okay? And action. Wow. Wow, wow, you open up with a sports example of people being in conflict. Uh, and, you know, and children are just as jealous as, as this short piece of, of, of writing indicates. They are just that jealous. Uh, the important thing, in my opinion, because I'm mature, is winning. But to a child, it's I want to be the quarterback. I want to be the pitcher. I want to be the catcher. And... Uh, uh, the, I'm, sorry, this, I'm sorry to put words in your mouth, but say, so this book was really helpful. It should be in every school and every right. sports. Okay, and action. Right. This, this book is really helpful. I think every school teacher, every coach needs to have a copy of this book available for not just their reading, but to pass it to a child who's having these kinds of conflicts. Uh, what reactions have you gotten from coaches and teachers? Well, from teachers, not so much coaches. Mm -hmm. From teachers, they say, oh, I see this in my classroom. Oh, I see this with students. Oh, I see, they see it, but we need to give it a voice. So now you say, well, let's make sure we get it to the coaches and then go to a break. Okay. okay. All right, and action? All right, well, let, let's just make sure we get this to the coaches. Uh, I, I need a break. We're going to take a break on Eye on Baltimore. We'll be right back with more Eye on Baltimore. Don't go anywhere.
Hey, welcome back to Eye on Baltimore. I'm John Carrington, and my special guest is Barbie M. Johnson, and she has written Talk It Out, a book that's going to help young people to uh, behave and not have conflicts that uh, end up with somebody getting hurt. Uh, you've written other books. Uh, talk about the other books you've written. The other books I've written is My Life Story, From Childs to Affliction, Born to Die, three poetry books, and take dating tips for young Christian women. Dating tips for young Christian women. Absolutely. T talk about that book for a moment. That's just telling women how to maintain their virtue and to look out for things with men um, who are just seeking to Abuse you know, them. be a one night stand. I hear you, I hear you. What advice do you have for uh, the men? Men, if you're looking for a wife, you got to stay before God because mm -hmm. you should know who it is that you desire for a wife. Just as God showed Abraham his son's Isaac wife, he'll also show you. I love that. I love that. Now, you've written a book of uh, inspirational poetry, and I think you had a sister who helped with that, but and she's now deceased, but... She contributed to that. Talk about that particular book. Absolutely. Those were um, the poetry books. Actually, she penned most of the poems with her own hand before she passed away. So, And um, the books were done in her memory. Uh, again, how can folks get a hold of, of those books? Go to the um, website, thefaithwalk.yolasite.com, or you can call me, 443-301-7928. Right. Who were your role models? I you didn't grow up saying I'm going to be a writer. Somebody had to be that <laughs> example. Who, who were your role models? Well, who are your role models? There were a couple of people who kind of inspired me. Um, Kenneth Hagin, he was one because I liked his books that were talking about how to overcome situations in your life. And Rick Rayner about putting on dress to kill, putting on the armor of God, uh -huh. and standing. All right. And, and of course, you've um, written the book about the uh, 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 prayer warrior situation, uh, uh, Live Born to Die, Born to Die. That's a, that's a scary title. <laughs> it's, it's actually about two kinds <laughs> of death, a spiritual death and a physical death. Just as Jesus came, he was born to die for us, to take away our sins. So that's why it's entitled Born to Die. So there's some things that you have to overcome or to do in order to get a, com a task completed. So he completed his task for us. If he had not, we would have no hope of redemption. Amen, amen. Now you sound like you're under some good ministry, but talk about your, your home church. My home church is... The Fresh Start, where Pastor Craig Coates is the apostle of the church, and it's located in Glen Burnie right here on 120, not Ridley, Langley Road. Uh -huh. All right, well, you have other projects in the works. Uh, talk about some of those future projects. The one that I have um, completing now is called In the Church But Hurting. This is in regards to actual people hurting in the church. They're suffering in silence and going home to abuse or what have you. So we are trying to help those people open up like women's group, men's group, talk about the situation. There are resources and help sources and support for those people who are going through. Even if you have to be removed from a situation or have the other party removed from a situation to help. It, well, you know, the. The hospital is a place for sick people, mm -hmm. but so is the church. Everybody Absolutely. has something that needs to be adjusted, and the church provides that. Um, you've written a book uh, to help people get from underneath that sickness or that problem they bring to the church. Uh, give me some examples of what help people can get from being in a good church. They get the counseling. There are churches that are, have actual counselors right there in the church to help with people who need that kind of help. There are people who help with the, even the health issues. We have doctors there um, that they can come and see. Other resources. Mm -hmm. well, you'd be surprised at the uh, range of career areas that are represented in the church. Absolutely. 
All right, this, this is very exciting, and you're a great author. Do you have any last thoughts? Well, my last thoughts is for parents, make sure you know what your children are doing, and be concerned about what they're doing and what they're learning in school, other than just taking on someone else's feelings and emotions and then playing them out in the street. All right, well, Barbie M. Johnson, I want to thank you for being a part of I on Baltimore. Thank you. And I hope you book one last time and tell folks how they can get a hold of it. You can get a hold of it on the website, thefaithwalk.yolasite.com, or you can call me, 443-301-7928. All right, please repeat the number. 443-301-7928. All right, this is I on Baltimore. I'm John Carrington, and this is my special guest, Barbie M. Johnson, and we'll be right back. John Carrington, and this is my next guest here. This is Gloria Jean Smith, and she has written the uh, wonderful book. Um, uh, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes I have to read what I wrote. <laughs> sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Yes. What inspired you to write that? Well, with all of us, we need encouragement at some time or other, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be the person that uh, interviewed 50 some people to tell me, what do you do to encourage yourself? Mm -hmm. Share with, you know, with everyone. Mm -hmm. Maybe we never thought about doing, you know, doing it. So I wanted to help others and myself to uh, just do daily things of encouragement for them. Right. And you're, you're uh, an encourager in the church too. Well, what positions do you hold? The, um, well, first of all, I am the uh, choir uh, director for our choir. And um, the, we were doing uh, Dream Girls Ministry, mm -hmm. and also uh, Mission and Outreach is, uh, is my really love mm -hmm. in the heart, and working with seniors. So you're a triple threat. You sing, you dance, and you act. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I do the best I can with what, what I have. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you look like you're ready for the camera. I love your hair. It's thank, you. thank you. I thank you. Okay, and now how can people get a hold of the book? They can uh, email me at smithgloria109 at gmail.com. It's on Facebook and um, Netflix. Okay. All right, uh, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Uh, could you read a little passage from it for us? Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. I encourage you to do that. Okay. <laughs> What I will read is a passage that's called, The Things I Love and Hate About Myself. I hate I do not take enough time to study God's word. I hate I'm not able to discern if a person is truly approaching me because they will work for food or they would like for me to share God's word. I hate I procrastinate until the day before a deadline. I hate I have not completed my vision to write a cookbook and a poetry book. I hate that I'm not focused on discipline and exercise. Oh my God, what I do love about myself is that the Lord is my personal savior and all these things can and will change through faith and prayer. God came to deliver me and that is what I believe. I just want to do what's right. 
I believe God will give me everything I need, including meditation, study, and exercise time. I believe I will receive special discernment, early completion of deadlines, a spirit of volunteering out of my comfort zone, and I will complete my life visions and goals. I know I can have and will receive all the things through Christ who strengthens me. I know my Heavenly Father will do what he said he will do. Oh yes, I just want to do what's right. God first loved me and I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to love God, myself, and my fellow men. The things I love and hate about myself is not my battle, it's the Lord's. Amen, amen, amen. that's powerful. Oh, wow, that is really great. I, you shared a piece of the book, and but we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with more of Eye on Baltimore. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. guest Gloria Jean Smith and she's written the book sometimes you have to encourage yourself and you mentioned that you are a choir director yes uh, uh, I am the president of the choir I don't direct the choir per se they just allow me to be there and sing along with them all right now sometimes people have a talent and sometimes they don't but they want to be on the choir mm -hmm. how would this book help somebody who is a wannabe but they just need some encouragement uh, they have to pick up the book and read some of the writings that people have uh, suggested, things that have, they have done to encourage themselves. You know, you just have to take that leap of faith and just read the book. It's, it's geared towards young people, seniors, you know, we all need some type of love and encouragement at one time or another in our lives. Yeah. Now correct me if I'm wrong, the way you compiled the book was that you asked a number of people how do they encourage themselves yes. and then they contributed these nuggets. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so what you have here is a compilation of everybody's good ideas yes. for encouraging yourself. Yes, and the, the uh, eldest of them is Miss um, Marion and she, January the 14th, she was 105 years old and she lives by herself with her family come in and check on her. And um, it's just awesome, the things that she do to encourage herself. You know, the eldest man at our church, uh, Mr. Booz, he's 102. He's also in the book. I have uh, my grandson and my great-grandson, they are 10 and 11. They also are telling what they do when they are down and out, you know. And it, it's, it's just awesome. With all ages, you'll find you know, something here. And then I wrote, and God gave me different spiritual writings that I put in, you know, myself along with that. And you can carry it around in your purse. Okay. Wow, my goodness. Uh, I, I want to join your church. All these people are 100 uh, years it's, old. It's, it's <laughs> sounds, it sounds wonderful. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm, I'm 75, so I'm what? pushing on. I'm pushing on. I thought God, you were about 18 years oh, old. Oh, no, and don't want to be either. <laughs> All right. And don't want to be. Uh, yes, I just want to encourage young people and my grandchildren. Whatever you set your mind to, you can do it. You, it's not going to be easy, but that's okay. Just keep pushing forward, and you can do it. Well, sometimes people just need that bit of a, of a push to say that they are okay in God's eyesight. You, you can feel depressed about yourself, uh, your, your circumstances, but this book seems like it's going to be a key to helping people. Again, how can they get a hold of the book? They can get a hold of the book uh, through my um, email, which is uh, Glor with Smith Gloria, 
gmail.com. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Facebook, Gloria Smith. All right, and the cover is beautiful. You better explain how that cover came together. See, um, uh, one of my daughters designed the cover, and this is my granddaughter. Uh, she was on a cruise ship and didn't want to go with the other kids, so she followed her mother and all of us, and she sat at the table encouraging herself, sticking these little umbrellas in her hair, and when I saw that picture, I said, one day I'm going to write a book, and I want that picture to be there. And I have a cousin, uh, George Berman, that's an artist, and my daughter sent him a picture of me from a party, from a wedding, and he drew that picture of me. And so it just all came together, and my uh, daughter Angela uh, designed the cover, and my uh, daughter Arlene, you know, helped with it so much. All right. What has been your funniest moment in compiling this book? Uh, the, funniest, the funniest moment is when I thought that I was going to go to Oprah's show this year, but it's not going to be until next year. Oh my I'm, goodness, I'm, you been Oprah? <laughs> I'm, look, I'm saying this because this is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's my funniest moment. <laughs> you I had said, me going there for a moment. <laughs> I said it first here. <laughs> All right, she's going to be in the Oprah Turner show. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with more of Eye on Baltimore. special guest, Gloria Jean Smith, and she's going to be on Oprah Turner's show <laughs> and talk about her book. Wow, that, that's powerful. Uh, do you have any last thoughts? The, uh, yes, that uh, it's never too late to realize your dreams and your goals and to follow them no matter what the age. Wow. I, I've, I've had wonderful guests today, and I just really appreciate you. I appreciate the book. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. And uh, if, if I don't have any singing talent, I'll just get your book and I'll just encourage myself and I still won't have any singing talent. <laughs> but at least I'll be encouraged. Yes, yes, of well, course. Well, this is I on Baltimore and we now see your book and, and when folks uh, call you or contact you to uh, get a copy, they'll mention that they saw the book on I on Baltimore. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye uh, and keep your eye on Baltimore. You. you can live to survive to 105 if you're young at heart. Here is the best part. You get a head start when you are amongst the very young at heart.